In the last video of this series, if you watched it, I shocked you with how complex it is to get this application to run. But now as you saw how it is and that in the end we only use a couple of these many files to do so, namely the app module, the index HTML, the main TS and the app component here. Since we only use these files, well, I think we're now in the spot that we can work on our application and actually make it a bit nicer or display more than just app works. The first thing I want to do is I want to install Bootstrap just to get some styling. And with the CLI, installing Bootstrap is really easy. I can just download it with npm install minus minus save bootstrap. We installed Node.js, so we may use the npm package manager or the node package manager for this. And this will add Bootstrap as a dependency to this project. With the save flag, I'm basically telling it that I want this dependency to have both in the development environment as well as the production environment. Now with bootstrap installed here, you can see it was added in the package.json here. With that installed, I have to tell the CLI that I want to use it to style my application. I can do so by going to the Angular CLI JSON file, which allows me to configure my project through the CLI. And here we get this styles array. Here we can add all the files we want to use as global styles, which means add them to the index.html file because we want to use them all or everywhere in the application. Now besides styles.css, here we also want to use bootstrap. So let's simply reference it. It was added to the node modules folder and I'm using two dots at the beginning because we have to see this relative from the index.html file on. And in the node modules folder, we have a new bootstrap folder where we have a dist folder, CSS, bootstrap CSS. You can of course look this up by simply having a look at your node modules folder and here at the bootstrap folder where you will find exactly what I'm referencing here, this bootstrap CSS file. So this is how we add bootstrap to this project. And with that, it will automatically use it as soon as we start at the ng-serve process here with control C and then restart it. And now we will have the bootstrap styling available. Well, that's nice, but I also want to add some new components and so on. We'll do this next. In case you forgot what you want to build, we want to build an application where we have a collection and a market where we can then add things from the market to our collection. So I will at least need these two components, a collection and a market. Now to create a new component, you get a couple of options. You could simply create a new file on your own. Just try to keep this naming convention of name.component.ts. You can also use the CLI. In the CLI, it's as easy as running ng, then generate, or just g as a shortcut, and then component, or just c as another shortcut and then the name of the component you want to generate. For example here, I want to create a market component and I could now hit enter. And what this will do is, it will create a new folder in the app folder, which holds all the market component related files. Now I can get rid of the spec file here, the testing file, and also of the CSS file, and also get rid of the style URLs in the app component TS file then. This created a new component and of course you can also create these files by hand. There's nothing wrong with that. If you do create them by hand, just think about adding them to your app module though. Here, the CLI did this automatically. It will not happen automatically if you create the files on your own. So make sure to add market component here to the declarations array and also add the import to it at the top. On the import statement, it's important that in TypeScript here, we don't add the file extension. So we only import market.component and not market.component.ts. With that set up, we are able to now use this component and we can use it by using its selector, which was set to app market. Of course, you can overwrite this in our app component HTML file. So here I'll simply add app market and save this, which will trigger a recompilation since the serve command is still running. 
And then on the page, we see app works and market works, exactly what I want. This is how easy you add a new component in your application. Now, of course, this is not very beautiful and not really close to what the application looked like I showed you at the beginning. So let's fine tune this a little bit. The first step is I'll go to my style CSS file and add some global styles here. Just some padding to get this a little bit more in the middle of the page and not set it directly on the edge. Thereafter, I want to go to my app component HTML file and work on that here. I'll quickly remove everything here and add a container. This plugin I'm using here, which allows me to do this trick here, is called Emmet. And with that, I can just type the class name with a dot at the beginning and then hit tab as a side note. Nothing too specific, just a feature of my IDE. So this is a normal container class here using the bootstrap framework. And in here, I want to load my app market component as before. Now, of course, I also want to work on this app market component. So in this market component here, I want to create a row with a nested bootstrap column class, let's say like this to make it equal on all screen sizes, not really creating a great mobile first application here. And then I want to create a list group. So an unordered list with the list group class. And in here, a list item, whoops, also with the list group item class. And this will later on become the item where I then well, I'm able to click on add to collections on. Right now it looks like this. A little bit nicer, but not really like the application at the beginning. So let's fine tune it a little more. In this list item here, what I want to have is I want to have a span with the batch class, which should give me the type of the item later on. So something like photo. I also want to have a button with the but classes button and button success to have a green button which then says add to collection and finally the name of the item. So this could be anything. Now, if I save this, we should be much closer to what we saw before. Yeah, definitely looks better. We might throw in an additional white space here behind the button or after the button just to get this a little bit further to the right here, but yeah, looks great. Of course, this is a static content here, nothing dynamic about it. The button doesn't do anything. And as you clearly saw, I'm not getting this data from anywhere. Well, we'll fix this in the next videos. For now, I'm happy with the current state. Of course, I also want to work on my other component, this collection. I do have two components in the end. So I'll create this component too with NGGZ for generate component and then collection. And here, since I won't use the styles anyway, I can add the minus minus inline styles flag or simply minus is and then spec false to not generate this testing file and to not generate the CSS file. So with that, you see, I only got the two files I need. And in here, you see, I now get the styles array, but no styles added. So I can leave that there. So how should my collection look like? Pretty much the same as the market. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code in there. But of course here, I don't want to add to collection. Instead, I want to have a class of button danger to make it red with a text saying remove from collection like this. This now gives me my collection and I can quickly add this here let's say below the market app collection like this. And if we now let this serve, and again, keep in mind, you have to add this to your declarations area here in app module collection component, as well as the import, make this or make sure to have this if you created the file on your own. So with this in place, you now see the market and the collection. Of course, we don't have routing yet. This will be added in a later video, but we got our two components. The next step is, to have some data to work with and let these components communicate with each other.